This whole process definitely has something to do with vision. Usually when I'm in so-called psychosis, and it's right before I'm hospitalized, I have trouble focusing. I actually feel like if I'm doing something, I can see in front of me, but I can't see in front of me. It's really weird. I feel actually blind, even though I can actually see. And maybe that's part of it actually, is that when we're in our ego consciousness, we're blind, but we can see. And that's why when I'm coming to the end of the process, when I'm reconnecting with the ego way of perceiving, which isn't perceiving at all, it's recognition. So part of recognition is actually blindness because we're always seeing the old. So I think that could be why all of a sudden I feel like I can't see. I can't see what's right in front of me. And it's because I'm going back to that ego consciousness. It's really weird to actually feel like you can see but you can't see. Normally I think in ego consciousness we can't see but we think we can see. But to be in that state where you can see but you realize you can't is really weird. So I feel like it's actually this vision and voice reversal process that happens and one can sort of oscillate between the two. And it could be that when one first goes into mania, the vision and voice reversal is very strong, very meaningful, very high. And then when one comes down, it's very low. And then the oscillation evens out over time. So then one might oscillate between ego and vision and ego and vision and, and be used to it. Sort of like how Our muscles in our eyes have to contract in order to change the shape of the lens so we can zoom in and out. There could be a zooming in and out and a muscle process in the eyes that happens that's even beyond what we regularly would think is the, the normal vision process. And it could be partly, I talked about relaxed perception and it could be that these muscles in the eyes relax and we're more taking in things in our eyes than actually projecting outwards. And it could be that when I was coming back to the ego, I still couldn't project outwards. So then there was nothing there. It was like, I felt blind, like there's the blind spot. We're always blind. And so something to do with the lens for sure in the eyes and relaxed perception versus always trying to focus because when we're focusing we're not actually seeing if we're focusing on this much of reality even by thinking is focusing our focus to this little pinhole we're missing out on everything else so we have a very big blind spot maybe we have like 95 percent blind spot we think we have 50 percent and it probably is true because we're just focusing on the 5% of our brain, the recognition that's happening, the camel process. It could be about the muscles in the eyes. And as that wave comes in and takes one over, I've experienced each time I've gone into so-called psychosis, map consciousness, trans consciousness, that it gets easier each time and it's shorter and it's almost like the wave is going like this over time they like to program us to believe that it's going to get worse over time maybe it gets worse over time because over time generally more and more medications are added i've been lucky enough to escape that and it hasn't gotten worse and worse i'm on less medications today than i've ever been on so to me, it's more about adjusting to the perception, the different mode of perceiving. And that can only get stronger with not being on something that blocks the process. If we're on something that blocks the process, it's not going to get stronger. That would be like saying, if you want your leg to get stronger, never move your leg. Well, we have to be able to move our brain cells. We have to be able to move our eyes. We have to be able to 
to perceive. I actually feel like meds actually do mess up our vision. I remember the first time I was put on antipsychotics, I couldn't see, and I had to wear reading glasses, and I couldn't even I couldn't even read on it. I couldn't even read a page. And so, if we think of how this process is actually getting us to see properly. Well, if you can give something that actually blocks the ability to see and actually distorts vision, then that process isn't going to continue. So a lot of how it could work is actually just blocking seeing and making us blind again. Like, oh yeah, everything's okay. I don't have to change anything. Only vision can change the world. And I might be labeled with bipolar disorder, but I feel that people with a clinical eye have universal myopic disorder of the serious and persistent kind. I'm said to have a biological condition, but I've never been shown any kind of biological test that confirms this. So to me, psychiatrists in the system they're just a bunch of storytellers. They tell me a story about myself to explain everything away. And it's a pretty crappy story. It's not one that I would ever want to hear again. It's funny how people think that they want awe. They want awe. They want awe. And that was beautiful experience. Wow. But you know, awe extended past just ah becomes mania and people don't want mania because then you become psychiatrized so it's okay to have that quick glimpse that quick perception that quick vision of seeing something in the moment but if you see more than just a moment's worth before the ego voice comes in and and starts to say wow that was so special i can't wait to have that again then you will be medicated. So be careful what you wish for. You don't want awe, you want to think about awe. And then you have one little awe and then you think about that awe and that holds you over till the next awe. People who go into map consciousness are awesome. They have some awe. They... Awe is when the ego is absent. And if it's absent for too long, you forget who you are, and then you start talking like you're somebody else. And when you start talking like you're somebody else, you might be captured and labeled and drugged. So be careful of all. Imagine if we were all saying out loud what we were thinking in our head. We wouldn't go out in public. And Likely most of those thoughts are not anything related to awe. So when we have this constant stream of non-awe, how do we expect to experience awe? It's because we want a certain experience of awe that we miss awe. Because awe is always something different. So even if we do have a moment of awe, forget it and move on. I was talking to a friend about raw food and cooked food the other day and I was thinking that a transconscious brain is kind of like a raw brain and an ego brain is sort of like a cooked brain. It's fried. It's fried with the wires in it. I feel like map consciousness and trans consciousness changes what we're tuned into so we're no longer tuned into the wires of the ego we're tuned into everything it's like we have infinite little antennas in our brain for anything and everything instead of a few big deep wires of desire and we really want richness we really want change yet change only happens in the brain and when we're wired, we can't change. And then when we're wired, we think that we're this me, which is the wiring, 
And then we think that the me has to do something to change the wiring, so it tries to do something to change the programming instead of just being and seeing. We treat our brain like it's a muscle, like we have to contract it in order for it to work, in order for it to be held up. But it's more like connective tissue, it's more like a fluid matrix, it's for seeing connection. So we have to tune into something else. And then we see we don't make the rules. But when we're in tune, we might uncover the rules and be able to play with those other rules and then master them. Master this other energy that moves us. To me, map consciousness and trans consciousness is like reverse flow. So there's people trying to learn how to get into flow. They're sort of learning the rules to get to flow. Whereas people who go into map consciousness spontaneously go into flow to learn the rules. So you can either be ego consciousness and sort of progressively learn to train oneself to exist in those other rules or one can be just sprung into it and have to try to learn the rules while they're in it it's more difficult to be sprung into it and learn the rules by trial and error and that's why it's sort of like being a kid again because kids sort of explore and grasp at things to learn the rules whereas by taking a course it's like oh somebody else knows the rules and they're just going to tell me it's sort of like trying to tell a kid how to walk versus just allowing them to learn how to walk if people who want to take a flow course were just were able to see then they wouldn't necessarily need a how-to. How to flow is how to see. Yet, how do you teach how to see when seeing is just seeing, it's something we take for granted. We think we see, so we think therefore we don't see. We're looking for ourself outside of ourself. We're looking for the one that looks. We're looking for the one that sees. And the one that sees flows. You don't have to have any kind of how to. Once you know how to see, you don't need any how-tos. People who go into flow spontaneously through map consciousness or trans consciousness are medicated out of flow. It's sort of like they can't stop the flow from flowing. And it's a confusing place to be because to flow is to not know. I think I know, therefore I don't flow. And in the stuff that Jamie Wheel sent about the flow course, he talked about becoming flow prone, and I thought, I'm flow prone. And I don't need a course to make that happen. What if people who were diagnosed with a mental illness just saw themselves as prone to flow? People with ego consciousness are prone to know and therefore say no to flow. It's not necessarily how to get into flow. It's to see and then see that we are flow. Right now we're a flow of words in our head. We're a flow of abstractions, which is a distraction from the flow. 
And the flow is really the flow of perception, the flow of the new, of new perceptions. So if somebody sees something and they feel awe, it's because they saw something. It's a perception. And so if you're always in touch with that, if you're always in touch with that new perception, then you're in flow. But as soon as you say, wow, that was awesome, that was so amazing, that was an awe experience, I want that again, and turn it into desire, then you can no longer flow. Because you have to actually realize that the awe experience isn't that special. It only feels special because we're so much enthralled in our non-specialness, which is the repetition of the old. But we can go from new to new to new to new, and it actually just feels normal. And then that's when flow just feels normal. And then is it really flow anymore? Because flow makes it sound like something special. And it's a relaxed perception because when we're focused and we're thinking, that's what we see. That's what we select for. That's what we make salient. When we relax our focus, it's more like flow-kiss, which is not focus. It's a relaxed perception. Something else selects for something in the visual field. So if we have one point, just like photography, you take a picture of something and you focus, you can only see that thing. But if you take a picture of the whole field and it's all in focus, a person can look at the picture and they can pick out whatever they want to make salient. So when we're in that relaxed perception, it's flowing in and different new things are actually coming in and making an impression on us, not what it is we're selecting for with our thoughts. So in order to be in flow, I feel, we have to not focus. Because when we are not focused, but attentive, aware of the whole field, not having this 50% blind spot thing going on. Something else grabs our attention and it's not that something that we've been programmed to pay attention to. Which is what they say with focus and people with ADHD, they can't focus on things. Well. That's just another example of how focus isn't natural. Nature doesn't focus, it becomes expansive, it becomes more complex, it becomes more beautiful. When we specialize, we no longer have special eyes. We don't have the eyes that can see anything and everything. If we're not in relaxed perception, if we're not in silence, if we're hearing words, that's focusing our perception. That's focusing our eyes. Those words in our head actually change the structure of our eye muscles and focus and actually project an image out into space, which interferes with being able to see what's actually there. And if we can't see what's actually there, we can't flow. That's one of the ways I think that those athletes are able to get in flow is that they really have to see what's there. Because if they don't, they're not going to be an extreme athlete. But they have to go to those extremes in order to put themselves into a position where they have to actually see where they are. And they call that focus, but I wouldn't call that focus. You have to actually have an expansive visual field to actually take in all the information to be able to surf the big wave. If you have a focus, you're focusing on one drop of water. You can't surf. And who is the one that focuses us? It's thought. It's programming. It's the past. And if that is in existence, we can't see the present moment and we can't flow. So it's not about how do I get into flow, it's how do I change the way I see, or do I see that I don't see, and when I see that I don't see, I see. And when you see something and you understand something, it gives your brain energy to grow new brain cells.
We need to understand our brains in order to fully stand under it in the field of consciousness and in the field of gravity. This other way of seeing, being, and not meing gets us into the flow. The me can't flow, it can only know what it knew, and that prevents the new. And the thing is, sometimes when we see a new, we come across as a completely different person. And then other people around us are alerted, and The ego voice warps our eyes to get us focusing in, this, in the wrong way. We're actually projecting an image outward because we're often caught in the images in our mind. And that's overlaid on the external. As opposed to letting the light come in and create an impression which is invisible. You can't even see it, but you understand it. And then that creates a different voice. And part of my point with comparing this flow thing to mental health challenges and illnesses and all that, so-called, is that if flow is seen as valuable, a person that goes there through map consciousness should be seen as going into a valuable state and having a valuable experience and a transformative experience. Stephen Kotler says flow heals the brain or flow heals the body. Flow healed his Lyme disease. By surfing it healed his Lyme disease. Well, through surfing consciousness and surfing the universe, it's actually healing our brains. It's actually creating new brain cell growth. It's, at first, it's not fully reinforced and it never gets reinforced if a person is pathologized and put through the mental health system. There was a conference at Esalen in the 60s or 70s that was titled The Value of Psychotic Experience. And Alan Watts was there and other people. And, and it's like 40 or 50 years later and this still hasn't caught on. Yet, they changed the name to flow. They changed the name from mental illness to flow or mania to flow and then market it and then the people who are going into flow into mania are are medicated so these people taking the flow course if they really go there they're actually going to be drugged so they sell us this flow and then they drug us at the same time for the same thing with a different name so it's important to give it the right name Hence, I do not identify with having a mental illness. And the brain is trying to heal, it's trying to flow, it's trying to rearrange, it's trying to move. And then it's poisoned. Just like somebody, if they have a twitching leg, you can inject some kind of toxin in the leg to get it to stop twitching. And they've done experiments on rabbits where they're in utero and then they inject something to make it so the rabbit can't move and the bones don't form properly because it can't move well if our brain cells can't move because they're being poisoned they're not going to grow properly I think that the ego dopamine circuits are the brain being fried it's like the brain being cooked and I was talking to a friend about how I ate raw food for 10 months and how it wasn't boring because an avocado would taste so delicious. It was just amazing because my taste buds healed from the overstimulation of chemicalized food. And so something very simple tasted absolutely amazing. And since our brains have been cooked and chemicalized by all of this false stimulation, we need more and more of it to actually taste anything with our dopamine brain. To even taste the dopamine we're creating, we need more and more and more. Well, this transconscious process cleans the brain in a way, and it switches it from being dopamine dominant, and it probably creates these inner neurochemicals which not just feel better, but are actually the 
conditions necessary for the other brain cells and the other areas of the brain to grow and take hold and sort of overgrow the weed, the invasive species of the dopamine circuit. And then simply looking around is enough instead of looking around for a certain thing and being on the hunt. Our brain can't taste life with all of this toxic information going on. It's turned our brains into toxic information receivers instead of natural enjoyers of simplicity, which isn't boring, it's, it's actually very complex. It's natural, but it's beautiful. And this simple perception, which is rich, is actually what's needed to restore the earth because in our simplicity of seeing, we see the natural beauty and complexity that Gaia is producing and allow that to unfold just as much as we harvest things to create our human structures, which actually reduce the complexity. So our simple perception is needed to restore the complexity of the Gaia sphere. And the whole picture sounds strange to ego consciousness. When we perceive, when we see, the whole picture is given voice to and it almost sounds like a stranger, like who is this talking? When it's actually our real voice. 